welcome students to the sixth lecture on the chapter wave optics in lecture 5 we discussed the theory of interference the conditions for constructive interference and destructive interference and the distinguishment between the constructive and destructive interferences now in this lecture we will move further to derive an expression for the fringe width and finally we will try to understand the interference pattern and its intensity now uh, i will define but we'll see it again what do we mean by fringe width now, fringe width is defined as the distance between the two consecutive bright fringes or two consecutive dark fringes so we are going to derive the distance between two bright fringes or two dark fringes which are nearby on the interference pattern so again this is a theoretical lecture as it is a derivation so please have patience and go through the derivation now here we have three pictures on this slide the first picture here is the young's double slit experimental setup in which we have a source yes we have the slits s1 and s2 and we have got the interference on the screen and then we have the picture which we are going to use to derive the fringe width which is here we'll discuss this again and we have a third picture here now this picture is the photograph of the practical interference pattern which is obtained by illuminating the red laser on closely spaced double slit this is a practical interference picture right so this is what the interference looks like okay now we move further with the derivation now in the as per this diagram is concerned let us consider two sources of light s1 and s2 which are coherent which are placed at distance d from each other now let p be the point on the screen at distance capital d from the plane of slits and let x be the distance of p from o from point o on the screen now what o is o is the equidistant point from the two sources s1 and s2 now let us make a construction let us draw two horizontal lines from s1 to screen and s2 to screen and let us have this construction now after this construction from triangle s1 p q and s2 p r using the pythagoras theorem we can say s2 p square minus s1 p square is equal to d square plus x plus d by 2 the whole square minus d square plus x minus d by 2 the whole square and on simplification we get s2 p square minus s1 p square is equal to 2 times of x into d so s2 p square minus s1 p square can be written as s2 p minus s1 p into s2 p plus s1 p so therefore we can write s2 p minus s1 p is equal to 2 x d divided by s2 p plus s1 p now we say that the two sources are very close so therefore d is very very practically very very small as compared to small d is very very small as compared to capital d that is distance between the two current sources or two slits is too small as compared to the distance between the plane of slits and the screen so therefore we consider s2 p plus s1 p to be equivalent to two times of d by retaining the difference between s2 p and s1 p so therefore we write s2 p minus s1 p is equal to 2 x d divided by 2 d where 2 and 2 gets cancelled we are left out with x into small d divided by capital d now we retain this part so we have retained 
the part here. So this was the same thing that we had earlier. So we from here we move further. Now the path difference is 2p minus is one p can be given as x into small d divided by capital T. So for minima or bright fringe, the path difference should be equal to x d divided by capital D, which is equal to n times of lambda. So for nth bright fringe, we can write x n is equal to from the above formula, you can write x n so that is position of nth bright fringe is equal to n into lambda capital D by small d. Similarly, for n plus 1th bright fringe, we have xn plus 1 is equal to n plus 1 into lambda capital D by small d. Now try to understand, we have arrived to two equations xn and xn plus 1, where xn gives the position of nth bright from O and xn plus 1 gives the position of n plus 1th bright from O. So therefore, there are two consecutive bright fringes and if we take the difference between these two, we are going to get the fringe width. So we define what fringe width is. By definition, fringe width is the distance between any two consecutive bright fringes or dark fringes. Here we have considered bright fringes. So we go for, so fringe width beta is given as xn plus 1 minus xn. So when we difference, take the difference between xn plus 1 and xn, we get that is equal to n lambda capital D by small d. So therefore, beta is equal to that is fringe width is equal to lambda capital D by small d. We can get the similar kind of expression if we work out for dark fringe, if we work out for dark fringe. So take a book, a paper and pen and write it down whatever that has been explained till here, then you will get an idea how this derivation have been worked out. Okay. So this is the expression for fringe width of interference pattern. So we know that the expression for fringe width has been derived as beta is equal to lambda capital D by small d. So if we make the changes in the experimental setup, the value of beta is going to change. Now how? So we know mathematically beta is directly proportional to the wavelength lambda. So therefore, as lambda changes, beta changes. Now, what do we mean by changing of lambda? So we have a picture here. Now, as the color changes, wavelength changes. So we are going from minimum wavelength to maximum wavelength. So we started with violet, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. So therefore, as we move from violet to red, the wavelength increases. As the wavelength increases, we can see on the screen that the fringe width is increasing. So therefore, the number of fringes on the screen is decreasing because width between two fringes is increasing. The size of the fringe can increase if we increase the wavelength. This is what we understand. Similarly, beta is proportional to the distance between the slits and the screen that is capital D. Now we can see here when the screen is moved away from the slit for a fixed wavelength, we are using only red color, which is fixed, the screen is being taken backwards. So what happens as the screen moves backwards, the fringe width increases and hence the number of fringes on the fixed screen goes on decreasing. And then we have beta inversely proportional to the distance between the slits, right? So therefore, if slits distance between the slits, if it increases, then fringe width should decrease. That means the number of fringes on the screen should increase. So try to understand here, the fringe width is being increased. So due to which the fringe width decreases, hence the number of fringes on the screen increases. Right. So I hope you have got an idea what fringe width means and how fringe width gets changed if we make the changes in the experimental setup. So fringe width can be changed by changing the wavelength of the light which is being used, by changing the distance between the slits and the screen and by changing the distance between the two slits. And here we have a photograph and the graph of the intensity distribution in Young's double slit experiment. So we have path difference versus intensity in the graph. 
So at zero part difference, that is at the center, we have a bright fringe with respect to the pattern. So then when we go to the point between zero and one lambda, we have a dark fringe that is lambda by two. Then at one lambda, we have on either side, we have bright fringes. Then 1.5 lambda on either side, we have dark. Then 2, bright. Then 2.5, dark. Then 3, bright and so on. So the beauty of the interference pattern is that the intensity, maximum intensity of the interference brights for all the positions is same. So all brights are equally bright and all dark are equally dark. Now what speciality in this? Now remember this statement. All bright in interference pattern are equally bright and all dark are equally dark. Now, what this means, what is the significance of this? We'll understand that when we discuss diffraction phenomenon. But mark this statement as of now. right? So therefore, in today's lecture, we discussed the derivation for fringe width. We try to understand how the fringe width can get changed due to change in wavelength, distance between the slit and the screen and the slits. And finally, we understood the intensity pattern of or intensity variation of various positions, locations on the screen of the, inter, uh, of the interference pattern. Okay. Thank you.